Hi gorgeous menopausal girls. My name is Adele and whilst the lovely Julie is on holiday, she has asked me to be a guest presenter. Woo! Get me! So what gives me the authority to talk to you, you lovely gorgeous girls? Well, I'm menopausal. <laughs> like you and I'm going through the same things as you so that gives me a little bit of insight but also I have been a fitness and nutrition instructor for hmm, 25 years a long time and I specialize working in with women who are over 40 who want to get body confident body healthy and lose weight but losing weight is a sidetrack really to feeling fantastic about who you are so that's a little bit about me. My little business is get-gorgeous.com and the girls that I work with are all gorgeous like you. But what I really want to talk to you about this evening is about, hold on to your seats, damp gussets. I know, it's out there, I've said it, pelvic floor. Now I know how down to earth and lovely Julie is when she talks to you. So, and I know this is a very select group, so I thought I could get away with saying the words damp gusset. <laughs> I hope I can. But it's something that we don't talk about and it's something that we should talk about. Pelvic floor issues. Your pelvic floor is a muscle. It's a muscle that you can do something about. So one of the things that I have studied for decades is Pilates and Pilates gets good press, but it also gets bad press. I want to make it very simple, very clear and how you can strengthen your pelvic floor. Let me start with a really, really basic anatomy. How many abdominal muscles do you have? Three, you have three tummy muscles. Think of your abdominal, think of your midriff as a cylinder, like a can. I'm not going to say Coke can because we don't drink Coke. No, no, no. It's full of high fructose sugar. We're not going to drink that. But think of a cylinder, a can. And at the front of the can, you've got your six pack. And then underneath your six pack, your rectus abdominals, you've got your obliques. And they attach from your lowest rib to your opposite hip. And then underneath that, you have your TVA, your transverse abdominus. And in the world of Pilates, this is called a corset muscle. Now, a Pilates is interested in pulling, drawing in navel to spine, depends on who you go to work with, navel to spine or hollowing or drawing in gently, about 30%, all that technology, but basically all you need to do is pull your deep abdominal in and that will draw in the obliques and it will flatten the rectus abdominis. So it gives you a flat tummy, but more importantly, it activates that cylinder. At the base of the cylinder is the pelvic floor, the sling muscle at the base. And on top of the cylinder is your diaphragm. So those muscles all together work as a unit. That's why breathing is so important in Pilates. Now what, why Pilates has been criticised is because when people are doing sit-ups and they lift their head right off the floor and down again, they're actually using their back. So we do tiny little sit-ups. I would demonstrate but I've got my fancy clothes on tonight to talk to you. Um, but when we do sit-ups we're much, much closer to the floor. Tiny moves. We're pulling in the deep abdominal and we are also engaging the pelvic floor. So there's quite a lot of internal thought going on whilst you're doing your exercise. And that is why Pilates is so good for relaxation, calming and just switching off at the end of the day. It's a mind-body discipline like yoga, like Tai Chi, where you have to think about what you're doing and that is why Pilates is so good. It can be done incorrectly when you do your sit-up and you push down on your pelvic floor. So you push down and you feel like you're going for a wee. But if you think about what you're doing and you press your belly button to spine just a little 
and engage your pelvic floor and then you do your Pilates moves, fantastic. Let's talk a little more specifically about the pelvic floor. So that's working the whole cylinder. But you also need specific pelvic floor muscles and you can do pelvic floor muscles at any time. Nobody will know. I'm doing mine now. You would never know. Nothing changes in your body. You're totally discreet. Okay? <laughs> so what you want to try and do is think about not going to, well, think about stopping going to the loo. Mid-flow. You know that. You've heard enough people tell you that. Obviously, you don't want to do that too often whilst you're on the loo because you're then drawing up the urine. But what you want to do is get used to the feeling, okay? and then connect with your pelvic floor and lift it discreetly 10 times that's it i can see you doing it then when you've lifted it 10 times you then want to hold it for 10 seconds and breathe at the same time can you do that practice well done and relax let's do it again 10 lifts lift lift engage the pelvic floor the sling muscle between your legs that's it lift another five another four good keep going doing it with me lovely <laughs> now hold hold that muscle engage imagine that you're going to the loo and you're stopping well done, hold it a little bit longer and then gently relax. So it's important that the muscles tense but they also learn to relax. Now I spoke to somebody recently, a professional lady, who had no idea where her pelvic floor was and had lost contact with her pelvic floor. Very, very busy life, lots, lots going on. But I promise you, the more you think about what you're doing, the more you practice what you're doing, then the easier it becomes to identify your body. It's, it's only a muscle. It's nothing to be intimidated by or scared by. Simple engagement. And if that doesn't make sense to you, trust yourself, keep practicing, and eventually that muscle A will become aware and B become stronger. And that's what you want. No more damp gussets here. Pelvic floor strength, holding on, that's it, and releasing. So you're not holding the, the pelvic floor or pulling the tummy muscle in all the time. You're doing it, what, morning and night whilst you're brushing your teeth? Something that triggers a habit, something that you do every day that you can then add your pelvic floor exercises to. That's what you want, a trigger to create that habit. I'm big into habits. That's how we change our lives. One small habit at a time. So I hope you've enjoyed this evening's chat. If you want me back as a guest presenter, I would love to come back and chat to you, especially because I know you're so down to earth. <laughs> um, Speak to you soon, take care and have a great holiday Julie, miss you lots, bye!